Okay, hello. So I hope you're doing fine. Uh, my name is Balash Koroshikail. I work for a company called BlackRock. And yeah, it's a financial company, but also a software company because we are selling our platform, asset management platform, Aladdin, to other companies as well. So we have an ICE office in Budapest in a building called the White House. So you might say that I'm a vice president from the White House, not the president, though. I know it's a, not a good joke nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> so the bridge between people and the underlying software systems that the, we developers build is the user interface. Um, and it could be, it can, it can come in different variations. Just think about the smart speakers that are uh, pretty popular today. Uh, and most of the applications have a visual interface. Now, you need, really need to pay attention to this visual interface because um, if you break this link, um, then it will make your users lose trust in your business. So later, uh, in, uh, in the hands-on part of the talk, I'm going to show you uh, how you can uh, uh, use a tool called Storybook um, to um, render your components in isolation in your Angular project. So I'm going to uh, use Angular for this example. And, and then I'm going to show you how you can use uh, the, the add-on called Story Shots to uh, create snapshots and then later how you can automate this whole process to compare the old snapshots with the new snapshots as you're changing your code and running the test again. OK. So hands up if you have used this software. OK. <laughs> OK, I thought the, it would be a bit less. But, but yeah, so uh, I think this is a really great example of a well sought out user interface. It really made life easier uh, compared to copying files on the personal computers in the 90s. In fact, everybody pretty much had this, uh, had Norton Commander on their PC. It was the first thing you installed or just copied, right? <coughs> And for those who don't know it, it's, it, it has two panels side by side. Uh, now, on this image, I just only have one uh, panel open. The other is just showing the information about this. But it could be two panels uh, with different locations on your file system, and you can easily copy files from one panel to the other. Now, um, people don't really use this anymore. Do you think why? Or do, do, do you know why? Uh, so I think the reason is because people don't use computers anymore. Um, you know, what is a personal computer anyway? Uh, so instead, what they do is they watch movies, they browse the internet, they message each other. And uh, if you're talking about design in the software industry, you pretty much have to um, talk about Steve Jobs and his team at Apple. Right? Uh, because Apple had this vision that computers will one day be just uh, a part of our everyday life as just, just tools uh, and pretty much hiding the underlying technology. And it turned out to be true. Um, and um, I think this, this image really kind of represents Apple's philosophy. Uh, and although I have an iPad here, it was really uh, around 2007 with the introduction of the iPhone and then all the other smartphones uh, when things really changed. Because this new form factor um, required um, people to be more creative and figure out new ways to, to uh, do visual interfaces and you know, use gestures and so on. So now, um, let's look at uh, some. Also, uh, I want to mention that uh, a lot of these changes that people figured out on the smartphones uh, were transferred back to the desktop. So let's see a couple of examples of what changed. OK? So this look is a form that was 
previously uh, a registration form, maybe. It's pretty static. Yeah, you have some input fields there, uh, but you get the error message once you submitted the form, and it was rendered on the server side and sent back with a new page. Um, yeah, it's pretty boring. So now uh, we have more sophisticated form controls, right? They have different states. Uh, they have different ways to input data. Uh, as you type, uh, they show you whether you have an error in the field or not. And yeah, we can hopefully see in a moment that it, you know, it turns if you enter a valid email. And we have form controls that even uh, present you with a pop-up. So in one word, they are more sophisticated. And of course, uh, it's um, more complex to implement. So luckily, we have design systems widely available. For example, Google's material design, but also maybe Bootstrap. Um, however, and, and you as a front-end developer can, also, uh, can always just uh, use this. But companies today are realizing more and more that uh, they actually have to have their own branding, their own design system. And inherently, that means more bugs, right? Because uh, one design system versus many design systems, you know, it cannot possibly be as good. Uh, so let's now take a look at one more example. Um, Previously, this could have been a banking application and a screen where you transfer money. From, you know, from the image, you can tell that it's packed with features. And you know, what happens if, if the user interface is slightly off? Well, you don't even notice it, right? You, you, you don't really doubt that it will work. Now, today, a startup company might offer you an application in your smartphone. So this, uh, and they are using their own design system, right? Not na using any native components because they want to distinguish themselves. And so they come up with a nice looking application and then they promise that it's gonna be the easiest ever experience and the most convenient and you start using it. But what happens if the developers screw up and the user interface is slightly off? Well, in this case, you quickly use, lose trust in the whole application and the company because, you know, I mean, it should look professional, but this doesn't look professional. And there are some other things as well that today make life harder for the front end developers. So, of course, you need to support multiple devices. Of course, you need to support multiple locales and slow connections. And you need to think about accessibility. So user interfaces are more complex, and it's easier than ever to break them. Uh, so what do we do about that? Well, for one, we, are, we, do, uh, we create our architecture in a way that supports uh, testing, supports unit testing. So as you can see here, uh, there is a unidirectional flow of the data along the yellow arrows. Data flows from somewhere the state through a container component to a presentation component. You can call them smart or dumb components as well. And then uh, if the user uh, clicks something, then that action has an effect and then along the purple arrows it flows back ultimately into the state and from the state the new data flows to the presentation components. Right. So, um, of course, the presentation components uh, can have multiple layers depending on your composition. And we all test these components in isolation for their functionality with unit tests. I think um, today probably everybody is familiar with unit testing in Angular. Um, but what about visual testing? Wouldn't it be nice if Without the whole application, you can just test this component visually. What if you could render it in isolation? So that's what I'm going to show you now. And it's going to be a, 
uh, live example. So fingers crossed. And what I will do is I will click, click, quickly show you a sample application that I created for this purpose. And then I will tell you how you can add Storybook. It's really easy. Uh, and Storybook will help you with uh, just that. So you can render your visual components in isolation. Uh, it's also good for documenting all your visual components. Then I will show you how you can create a simple story. A story is the unit test in Storybook, or the equivalent of the unit test. I will show you what you can do with more complex components that have downward dependencies. Uh, and ultimately, how, what you can do with a container component that has maybe a dependency on an asynchronous data source. So then, we move on to capturing images with the StoryShots plugin and storing those images for each component. Uh, and then later, when we change the code, we can run it again and compare the new snapshots with the old snapshots. So and ultimately, you can turn that into an automated visual regression test. OK. So now is the part when I need to change a bit. OK. OK. All right. So is it running? It's running. OK. Who likes Star Wars? Not so many people. Well, OK. I'm going to, for those who like Star Wars, I'm going to give you a sneak peek into the new movie that's coming in December. Um, of course, I'm joking, right? Uh, this has nothing to do with the new movie, which we're all eager to see. Uh, but instead, it's just a silly game that I developed. Now, in this game, uh, some virus spread over the galaxy, and some well-known Star Wars characters turned into zombies. And now your task will be, in the game, to fight against the zombies. So. All right, here we have the zombies, the team zombies. And then on the other side, we have the so-called renegades. They're, they are <laughs> people from both sides, right? And the computer already chose me an opponent from the zombies. So let me choose somebody. Well, let me, let me choose Poe. And let's fight. OK, so Poe po won. It's, by the way, a sophisticated machine learning algorithm that calculates the winner based on different properties. OK. OK, so another fight. Oh, oh, not looking good. So yeah, as you can see, unfortunately, um, who did I choose? Well, anyway, it, it turned into a zombie. So I only have two team members. Let's hope. Oh, OK, OK, I'm doing good. Oh, nice. So I might actually win this. Oh, yeah. I defeated the zombies. Great. So that's the the application. Now, <laughs> okay. So let's 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 take a look at this application. So you can kind of imagine that maybe this is a component, right? The, a low-level presentation component, and then the whole team is rendered with another component that kind of has a dependency on this component. So let's. Can you? Okay. So let's take a look at the, the structure quickly. So well, I'm not going to go into the details, but I'm serving the, the backend for this application from my local machine. So I have a REST server, and on top of that, I have a GraphQL server um, for another talk. But for now, I'm going to, uh, just going to focus on the clients uh, part. And in this clients, I have a couple of libraries. And most importantly, I have the presentation components, right? So in the presentation components, I have all the components that are dumb components, operate with inputs and outputs. OK. So how can I then pick this component and render it in isolation? <clears throat> so for this, I can install Storybook. Storybook. I'm not going to actually install it. I cheated. it. And I already installed it. But then I'm going to just stop the application and run Storybook. 
And if I run Storybook, it will, in a second, just building. It's really quick, by the way, compared to maybe compiling a larger application. OK, so um, by default, I don't have any stories, right? Um, so let's create one story, which, as I said, is a unit test for a visual, visual component. You can think about a unit test uh, like a unit test. So I'm going to go here and make it larger. OK, so I'm going to copy the name of this component and then create a new file. I'm going to name it .stories.yes. OK, so it's an empty file. So how do I create a unit test here? OK, I'm writing stories off. And I'm obviously, there can be uh, multiple test cases for this component. But this is going to uh, bundle the test cases here. So I'm going to just name it after the component. Uh, OK, and then I'm going to what's the, what's the okay I'm going to name this test case uh, and I'm going to name it renegade view because I want to render uh, a renegade character there. So okay I'm adding the, the function that configures this story and what I do just simply is I'm specifying the component. So with that, oh, I, I put a semicolon there as well. So with that, if I go back, ta-da, storybook, recognize my story, and it already rendered something. Now, of course, this component has a couple of inputs that I am not supplying here, so it doesn't look good right now. But you can see that on the left side, I have the collection of my stories, which is currently just one. OK, so what do I do about it? Well, in this props property, I can supply some inputs to my component. So I can say I want this name. And I have an image URL as well. And it's, uh, sorry. If I did it right, no, just one more zero. All right. So yeah, as you can see, I have I have worked with this particular presentation component without any other parts of the application. I supplied the inputs, and I got it rendered on the screen. Very nice. But if you go into this component, you can see that there are some other inputs here that I I'm missing already. So what I can do is just copy this part, right? <coughs> and I'm going to name it zombie view. Why not? And then I'm going to say zombie true. And OK, I have this other story here. So yeah, renegade view, zombie view. I have some other some other things here as well. So I can say selected. Well, I, I'm going to say zombie true and selected true. And I will name it zombie selected like that. OK. And it's there. But I have one problem. In the CSS, there is some neg negative margins there. So what do I do about that? So you can get you, you get the idea. You can define these stories with multiple combinations of the input properties, and Storybook Storybook will just pick up those and uh, it will render them. So now I have this problem that it's slightly um, off the screen. Okay. So what I can do about that is that I can say instead of this part. I can say template, template, and I can just put an HTML template there. Uh, 
just a second. Okay. Okay. So here I have the component. And, but it doesn't work, right? Why doesn't it work? Well, <coughs> if I am specifying the template, I will, I will also have to add a decorator here. And what I'm doing with this really is uh, something very similar to an Angular module. Okay. So I'm going to say declarations, and I need to declare this component. And I can also do imports. OK, so this is what I need for this component, right? And if I go back, well, it's there. The only problem is, what about the properties? Yeah, well, it's not there. So what I can do here as well is I'm just going to maybe do the name property. So I can do something like this. I can use the, the regular way of data binding that you have in Angular. And you can see it works. So you know, this is what you can do with just a simple component. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write all the stories for all the components, just very quickly. Uh, yeah. Just need to. <laughs> Just a second. Mm. Don't need this anymore. And let's jump over to the master branch. So, um, in the background, Storybook runs and picks up everything from the master branch. So you can see that I have these uh, all, all kinds of you know, visual tests for this component. Now, some of these components, for example, the team view <coughs> is a component that depends on other components. So let's take a look at the HTML. Okay. So you can see that there is an ng4 here, and then in, within the ng4, I'm using the character box. So what happens here is I'm using, well, first of all, if I'm, if I'm doing multiple stories, it's a good idea right, to, to just create your properties as constants so you can reuse them. Uh, and then in the stories, uh, when I'm adding the decorator and the module metadata, I'm just specifying you know, both components here, right? And <coughs> in this case, I'm using this template, but I could just uh, use the regular component version. But what's important here is that I am uh, pretty much mocking all the upwards dependencies, but I am not mocking the downwards dependencies because they, I'm, I need them to uh, render this component. So this is how I do it. And then finally, let's take a look at the container component. So, by the way, as you can see, I can uh, I can use uh, uh, this pipe to um, to put my stories into different categories, right? Here I have the presentation components, and then I have the container components. So, this is a container component that depends on some asynchronous data. If you if you go and look at the code there, right here. You can see that it has observable data bindings from a service. Well, so what do you do about this? Well, actually, it's no surprise. It's just like other unit tests. You need to mock them. So you just create a mock class, and then in the module metadata, you just uh, use it, you know, uh, as as the as the class to provide the real service. So that's all, right? Okay. So now, very quickly, um, what can you do to store the images of these components? Well, so <coughs> there is this plugin called Story Shots. 
for Storybook that you can install. I'm not going to go into the installation because it's a bit more complicated. <coughs> but ultimately, what's important here is that I have created a separate library just for the story shots test file. It's just one, one test file, right? Uh, and the important part in this file is this. Well, um, where I'm initializing the story shots plugin. So I just tell that it's the Angular framework. I give it some configuration. Now the configuration, you don't need to understand it too much, but it does uh, just point to the stories files. And then I'm sp also specifying that I want to compare uh, newer and, and older versions of this component uh, with images. I could also do an HTML like template compare, uh, but I want to do the images part. Um, okay. So if I run this, just like a unit test. By the way, uh, you need to use Jest, so it's part of the configuration. If you're not using Jest in your Angular project, you need to configure Jest to run the story shots plugin. But yeah, that's life, you know. Uh, and so um, when I run it, it will create these image snapshots. The reason it's, it is a bit slow is because I configured the plugin to wait one second before taking the screenshot because I'm loading images. And although I'm loading them from my local machine, well, just to be sure, I configure it for one second. Now, <coughs> the result of the oh, by the way, so you know, you, as you can see, everything is green, right? Uh, when you run it the first time, it will just create the snapshots like that, and you can, for example, take a look at it. So this is the image created from my component, from my you know my the, the visual unit test that I made in Storybook. Okay. So now, what can you do with this? Why is it useful? Well, you can go into the CSS variables, for example. And you know, you're wondering what would happen, what would be the effect of changing this? Well, let's run the visual regression test, right? It takes some time, and uh, here, <laughs> because Storybook is watching all the files, you can actually see if it found something because it will just reload all the files when a new file is written. And I hope it will to demonstrate what I'm saying. Come on. It's a bit slow. Yes, one failed. Okay, one failed. And I can go here to my image snapshots and I can see a diff output. And, well, okay, I hope you can see. So there is the old version, there is the new version, and in the middle you can see the difference. Now, this algorithm works by subtracting the two images. And so uh, when you're configuring this whole thing, you can specify a threshold uh, in percent, uh, percentage uh, because sometimes there's slight changes between you know, the images that you don't want to actually treat as an error. Yeah. So that's it. And so back to this slide. OK, so right, so, so uh, we took a quick look at how, uh, what, you know, the, the sample application, how to add the new story, which is the visual unit test equivalent in Storybook, what you can do with more complex com components, how you can then create image snapshots, store them, and compare them to newer versions. And well, automated visual regression test is just as easy as running this process in your continuous integrations as part of your continuous integration. OK, so visual testing is here. Don't use your loser's trust. And there is really no excuse not to do it, because it's so easy. Thank you. <laughs>